Hello and welcome to my latest video which admittedly has taken me a little while to do but it's going to be on the Celestron Rasa 8 and is basically my review of the scope. Luna's here as usual causing chaos. So here is the Celestron Rasa 8. It's a pretty big scope, I'm not going to lie, it is a monster. Vital statistics on it, it costs about £1,849 in the UK and that's not including the light pollution filter from Celestron that you might want to buy. That costs £279 on top and it weighs 7.7 .7 kilos. My experiences of the Celestron Rasa 8 have been a bit of a mixed bag and it's it's not the total fault of the, the Celestron Rasa itself, it, it's pretty much the UK weather. I have had a nightmare with dew. Now, when I first got this scope from David Hines Limited I did ask them about a dew shield or, you know, what, what I could do and then I was told that a dew shield wasn't actually available for it in the UK at this time. Whether that's changed now, I don't know. But basically, within 30 to 40 minutes of starting each of my imaging sessions, I've had to pack away because of dew. This thing is a moisture magnet. It sucks it in like nobody's business. And you can actually see forming on your subs as they come rolling in. Someone asked me why don't I use a hairdryer to clear it off and after thinking about it I could have done that but my next door neighbour, is he, he, they have a young son and he goes to school pretty early every morning and I'm not going to stand underneath his window pretty much uh, blasting dew off the front corrector plate and waking him up in the middle of the night. It's just not going to happen so that's not how I roll and to be fair, it gave me a pretty good idea, you know, that this scope is a dew magnet and I'm telling you guys now, if you go ahead and buy one of these, one of these you're going to need a big dew shield and a dew strap to basically try and get it under control. Let me know how you guys control it yourselves, if you already have a Rasa, I'd be really interested to see whether the dew shield and dew strap thing actually works because I know somebody who has an SCT design scope and he said that dew is a constant battle. So back to the rasa itself. How does it actually work? We take the cap off here. The rasa 8 has a 200mm aperture and primary mirror at the back. If I turn it around, that's a hell of a lot of glass and mirror. If you look here now, that's the kind of schematic for the light that travels down the tube. So you basically enter through the corrector, hits the mirror at the back, back through the lenses and your camera is mounted on the front. Now with the Rasa 8 you need a dedicated astro camera and it can have a sensor that's no bigger than micro, uh, micro four thirds. Anything bigger than that it's not really going to work. And you can't use a DSLR because they have too much spacing from the actual front of the camera to the sensor. This thing needs 25 mils only. So for example, the Altair Astro Hypercam 294 that I was using has 17.5 mil of back spacing already. So I just used a 7.5 mil spacer to gain that 25 mil from the camera adapter. That reminds me, with the scope you get two camera adapters and a power pack for the cooling fan that's in the back. If you want to see those bits bit by bit, I've got another video which is an unboxing video. Feel free to check it out. Okay, some recommended accessories by me are the top rail. I suggest you get this because even though you keep the exposures really short, well you can because this is F2 and it is a monster, you're probably still going to need some guiding at some point. You're not going to want to do 30 second exposures for the rest of your life. I don't know if the top rail is in, on sale yet, but I would recommend you definitely get it. You might also want a finder scope. Hey Luna, come on, this way. For it. 
it doesn't come included but you might actually want one and that guide that top rail might also be good for mounting a guide scope as well a light pollution filter especially places like where i live is a must so as i mentioned before celestron have their light pollution filter here's a picture of it fitted um, and who knows there might be other third party ones eventually but at the moment the celestron one is, is there and available and ready to go. It, it certainly helped my images a lot here in Birmingham. Plus points of this scope. It's quite light, 7.7 .7 kilos. I've been lifting weights, it's all good. And therefore it can fit on what they call entry le level astrophotography mounts, such as a HEQ5 or a Celestron AVX. Now, a bit of a note with the HEQ5, that has a Vixen puck and you will need a Lost Bandy adapter. So Altair Astro were very kind to me and lent me their Starwave Lost Bandy to Vixen adapter. Check out the link in the comments below. And that allowed me to even mount this on my HEQ5. This thing isn't heavy, but it is cumbersome, and I really struggled to mount it onto my AGQ5 to the point where I had to get help the first few times. After doing it a few times, it wasn't so bad, but I, I'm not going to lie, I had nightmares about mounting this on my AGQ5. I even dreamt one night that I looked down the tube and the mirror was completely smashed to smithereens. That's how much it was playing, <laughs> playing on my mind. So, bear in mind it is a monster, there is a lot of glass, and you know, just be careful. I would hate, it. they say that this is the portable option, but I would not want to try mounting this on my mount in the middle of a dark site with no lighting or anything. I just, I just wouldn't do it, and I don't want you to drop the RASA or any scope for that matter. I just want to say how amazing F2 actually is. I mean, I'll show you some images at the end and I'll put the integration times and they were all pretty much 30 second exposures. But this is great if you are afflicted by clouds. So people in the UK rejoice because this scope makes it easy if you can control the dew that is. But for those that have an observatory and dew control, I think this scope is an absolute winner. And if I had an observatory, I'd be like buying one tomorrow. I don't have an observatory, so that's not going to happen. But if I did, this scope would be kind of like nearing the top of my list to as to what I get, what to get, because you can get a serious amount of data in a, a short amount of time and you know you could just press pause and roll the roof back on and then roll you know roll it off and be carry on image again it, it's great another note to consider is when i got this scope everyone was like oh stace you're gonna find it an absolute nightmare to focus and i was like really worried I started researching Batonov masks and I couldn't find any in the UK. People offered to 3D print me one, which was very, very kind. I didn't actually get one in the end. But I needn't have worried. Focusing it was a dream. With my Astro camera, I set it to maximum gain. I did a 100 millisecond exposure and there was plenty of stars available. And that was even with the Celestron light, pit, uh, light pollution filter fitted as well. This is silky smooth. And what's more important, they've kind of redesigned the focusing system for this astrograph. They call it the ultra stable focusing system. So once it's focused, it, it holds its focus really well. And also, more importantly, I know some SCTs can sort of suffer with mirror flop. This has none. You can slew around and the field is still completely flat, regardless. And that's because I think the mirror is kind of preloaded under tension and it just holds it really nicely. So to sum up before I show you some images that I took with the RASA, I think it's great, especially if you have an observatory. 
I wouldn't class it as portable. It does have a due problem, especially in this weather at the moment. So if you're going to buy it, make sure you've got some serious due control. I think it's a great price for the like the aperture and the serious amount of glass that you get and the speed of the system. It just it's incredible. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it there. Fortunately, I haven't got as many images as I would like with the Rasa because it's just rain, 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 and more rain at the moment in the UK. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website at www.astrostace.com and let me know how you're all getting on with the Rasa. I want to hear other people's experiences too, or you know, if you agree or disagree with some of my comments. As always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.